Pair Gear just announced a 1TB CF Express Type B card. It's capable of 1600 megabytes per second read, 1300 megabytes per second write, and has a minimum sustained write speed of 420 megabytes per second. Is the Pair Gear 1TB CF Express card capable of supporting the high speed continuous raw shooting of cameras such as the Canon EOS R5, the R3, the Sony Alpha 1, or the much anticipated Nikon Z9. Each of these cameras has a 45 or 50 megapixel sensor, can shoot between 20 and 30 frames per second raw, again at 45 or 50 megapixels, and when it comes to video, can shoot up to 30 frames per second in 8K raw with the Nikon Z9, promising 8K 60 frames per second in a future firmware update. Of course, there's one other thing. How does this fit in and compete with the recently announced and released Angel Bird AV Pro SE 512GB card? I'll answer these questions and more. The Paragear 1TB CF Express card is more than capable of handling any video specs, frame rates, resolutions currently available in a stills hybrid camera. It takes 325 megabytes per second sustained. That needs to be your minimum sustained write speed in order to be able to record 8K video at up to 30 frames per second raw. So if you're shooting on the Canon EOS R3, it's also 325 megabytes per second if you're shooting 6K raw at 30 frames per second. So 325 gigabytes per second more than covers everything you're going to be shooting on the Canon EOS R5, the R3, the Sony Alpha 1, the Nikon Z9, in terms of what we have available today. Now there is one caveat here, in terms of the promised 8K 60 frames per second, it's unlikely to support that. To be able to shoot 8K 60 frames per second, we're gonna make some assumptions. We're gonna assume that Nikon, being a pro level camera, is gonna be able to shoot 8K at 60 frames per second raw, which means it's gonna be approximately double the requirements of 8K 30 frames per second. So 325 megabytes per second times two gives us a Minimum sustained write speed of 650 megabytes per second. According to the manufacturer, this Paragear 1 terabyte CF Express card can only support up to a minimum sustained write speed of 420 megabytes per second. In my testing of this card, I was able to get speeds higher than that, but again, this is what the manufacturer is telling us in camera is the minimum sustained write speed. So if you're out shooting a professional job or you just want to ensure that you're getting the content you need, you want to kind of bank on that 420 megabytes per second. So as far as video goes, this card will support video anywhere up to 8K raw, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. But as far as 8K 60, there is some speculation here, but I don't see there's any way it can do 8K 60 on the Nikon Z9, unless of course Nikon offers something equivalent to what Canon has, like an IPB Lite or even IPB or Longop, only then might 8K at 60 frames per second be possible. Now in terms of stills, I'm going to pick on the Nikon Z9. At 20 frames per second raw, continuous burst mode, it requires an incredible amount of bandwidth, 1.2 gigabytes per second. So again, looking at the minimum sustained write speed of 420 megabytes per second, this card isn't going to be able to support non-stop continuous raw shooting for very long. Maybe you might get a second or two, maybe three seconds out of it. It really depends because I haven't been able to test it on the Nikon Z9 because I don't have it. But as, I did, as I've done previous testing with other cards, what I notice is with cameras such as the Canon EOS R5 when shooting mechanical, with a minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second, I'm able to just shoot continuously without, without issues. I can shoot for minutes without, um, well, other than filling up the card, I can keep going and going and going. However, once I switch over to electronic, which is 20 frames per second on a 45 megapixel sensor, after uh, about six to 10 seconds, uh, the buffer starts slowing down. The buffer isn't as fast as a camera such as the 1DX Mark III. And what happens is I get about a good six to 10 seconds and then all of a sudden there's a pause, it clears the buffer a bit, then I'm able to record a bit more and it keeps kind of stuttering like that. And this is a test I did on a competitor's card, the Angel Bird AV Pro SX. Now the 1DX Mark III doesn't have this problem because it has a faster buffer, it's able to clear out a whole lot more so it can go a lot longer. There's bottlenecks all over the place. So there's bottlenecks in the camera as we're seeing with the Canon EOS R5 
in um, 20 frames per second electronic. It's the buffer. On the 1DX Mark III, though, or the Sony Alpha 1 or the Nikon Z9, you're going to find that the slowdown is actually going to be on the card. So you want a card that can go as fast as possible. And 420 megabytes per second will still support high-speed continuous RAW, but it really depends on the size of your buffer as to how many seconds you're going to be able to shoot before it fills up. I did some limited testing on the Pair Gear 1TB CF Express card, and the reason I say limited is any testing I do in the computer isn't the same as what we can expect in the camera. The computer's got a completely different bus, it has different operating systems, whether I'm testing on Mac OS, whether Linux or Windows, and of course different speeds of USB, of different speeds of the how the USB connects into the bus, and all these things. So one thing I want to say with a grain of salt, anytime I do any testing or anybody else does, where you're testing the right speed on a computer, it's not going to be nearly as fast in most cases as you would expect to get in camera. Now looking at the Pair Gear 1TB CF Express card, we're able to see that, at least for my limited testing using 5GB on Blackmagic's test software, I'm able to achieve a minimum sustained write speed of over 500 megabytes per second. And the read speed, well, pretty much about the same. So in terms of what the manufacturer says in terms of minimum sustained write speed, it looks like, yeah, no problems here. Now, as far as those 1600 megabytes per second read and 1300 megabytes per second write, this is peak. This is the fastest it can do. This is most likely what you're going to get when the card immediately starts writing and reading. You've got the buffer, you've got the RAM inside of it, and you're going to get the fastest speed. It might not be for very, very long, certainly not long enough to have an impact. And you really want to focus on that minimum write speed. But now, the elephant in the room. When Peregear reached out to me about a month ago, there was no Angelbird AV Pro cards on the market, the SE and the SX. The Angelbird AV Pro SE, which is the one designed for video, it's the 512 gigabyte CF Express card, again, again a Type B, um, kind of blew my mind a little bit here. I look at Peregear as a low cost alternative to the, 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 the top shelf companies such as ProGrade, such as um, Angelbird, and when I heard that they could do 512 gigabyte cards with a minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second for $179, I was a bit surprised because you see the price for the Pair Gear 1 terabyte CF Express card is $399. That's the manufacturer's suggested list price, and that's what you can find it for on their website. Actually, there's a sale on right now. I reached out to them because I wanted to ask them about the Angelbird card, and they sent me a reply saying, oh yeah, um, by the way, the one terabyte CF Express card, the Pair Gear card, is on sale right now for $360, and that's until January the 3rd. And the Angelbird 512 gigabyte card, the AV Pro SE, it's $179, and 99 cents multiplied by two is $360. This is kind of strange. It's very rare for the premium grade competitor to actually price their cards less than the low cost alternative. Angelbird, the AV Pro SE 512 gigabyte card has a minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second and a maximum of 850. The read is 1785 megabytes per second. So in terms of the read speed and the write speed, well, it's got the Pair Gear beat there. And the price, well, they're equal right now with the Pair Gear being on sale. But once it comes off sale on the third, unless something changes, the Angelbird is going to have the Pair Gear beat in price. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat here. Pair Gear is giving us a one terabyte card, and if you really want a one terabyte card, you only have one card in your system, well, then Pair Gear is giving you more. Angelbird does have a one terabyte card, but it costs considerably more because it's designed at offering you both high speed for stills and photography, and the 512 gig AV Pro SE is designed strictly for video. So 800 megabytes per second is gonna be able to do 8K 60 frames per second on the Nikon Z9. And so I'm a little bit, this, this is a tough video for me to do. I do like Pair Gear. I've been using the 512 gigabyte CF Express card for the last six months. I did a review of this and you know, 
a lot of people, or not a lot of people, a few people came up to me and said, look, you know, these are low end cards. How good are they going to be for professionals? So I said, you know what, I'm going to keep using this. And I've been using it for the last six months continuously up until just a few days ago when I got some new cards. So I used it for six months. All my personal stuff I shot using the 512 gigabyte card. And this was long before Canon started offering dual recording. So if it screwed up, I lost my content. So it proved to be completely reliable and they also have a five year warranty on the card. And so if I look at it in terms of price, well, it looks like the Angelbird, at least with a pair gear on sale, has the pair gear beat. And in terms of minimum sustained write speed, but it's almost double. If you were to ask me, Simon, which card would I recommend? And look at it, essentially they're both the same price right now with the pair gear being on sale, but having a much higher sustained write speed Okay, well, there's two things. If I'm shooting just video, well, it doesn't really make any difference because I can shoot 8K 30 frames per second on my R5 in RAW, and that's as far as I'm going to go. Unless I'm planning on going to the Nikon Z9, and I'm not anytime soon, then I don't need that higher sustained write speed for video. However, if you're a stills photographer, this definitely has an impact if you're shooting a lot of non-stop continuous RAW recording. As I showed you earlier, on the Nikon Z9, shooting 20 frames per second, non-stop continuous raw burst mode at 45 megapixels, it's putting out 1.2 gigabytes per second. That's well over the minimum sustained write speed of this card. So you're, what that essentially means is, if you were to use the, the one terabyte card, which I've currently got in the camera right now, if you use the one terabyte card and you're shooting non-stop continuous raw, you're only gonna get a couple of seconds of recording, whereas if you're shooting with a much higher card with like the Pro Grade Cobalt with 1400 megabytes per second, or the Angelbird AV Pro SX at 1480 megabytes per second, you can basically hold down that shutter and you're, you're not gonna to have to worry about how many seconds you're gonna get. Um, if you, once you go past about three or four seconds, the amount of files you're gonna get is absolutely ridiculous. And most of us, when we're shooting, are gonna hold down for fractions of a second. And for most of us, the pair gear card is gonna be more than fast enough. But still, when you look at the price and you compare it to the specs and just on the raw write speed alone, the AV Pro SE at $179 is to me a better deal. And I'm not gonna get into the SX. I did a separate video on both of those cards because I really do see the specs of the uh, hold up the right one here of the pair gear one terabyte. It's really aimed for video It's also aimed at those of us who don't have top-shelf cameras that don't need the high-speed Non-stop continuous raw that don't have 45 megapixel sensors. I think for most of us the one terabyte card is going to be more than enough it's just This is just a really strange place to be when you've got the one of the leaders in the marketplace one of the innovators producing a card that costs less that's more capable than the low cost alternative. That's really, really a strange place to be. So to kind of get to my point, to get to the conclusion of this video, what I think is gonna happen here is Angel, or not Angelbird, once Paragear found out about the Angelbird, they immediately put their card on sale to match the price of the Angelbird if you were to buy two of their cards. And what I think we're gonna see from Paragear is they're gonna discount the price permanently. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna be priced lower than the Angelbird somewhere around 300 or they could even go lower like 280 dollars up to 360 and i believe that's what's going to happen so if you're really interested in the pair gear card i would wait a couple of weeks to see what pair gear does with the pricing because i do think they're going to lower the price because when you look at angelbird which is the market leader and all the other capabilities that the cards offer in terms of protection against power surges, uh, internal fusing, fuses to help protect the card uh, and if you were to lose power during while you're writing you're not going to lose the entire file. It's also got protection for that too. And the faster processors that it has to be able to maximize uh, high speed continuous raw recording. It, it, at this point, it's hard to recommend the one terabyte over the Angelbird, but that doesn't mean it isn't a good card. It doesn't mean that it isn't dependable. It's got a five year warranty. It, and I've been using the, the slower version, the CF Express card, the 512 gigabyte CF Express card by pair gear as well. The only problem I did have when I was shooting with this is when I think it was on firmware 1.3, I had the 100 millimeter f2.8 RF lens from Canon. I was shooting high speed. 
And a couple of times what would happen is the camera would just completely lock up. And I think what was happening is it was reaching the buffer. Um, the camera wasn't handling the errors properly. And I had other problems with the ProGrade Cobalt card too, is after shooting for a while with that card, what would happen is the camera would completely brick up until I pulled the battery. And I've been using the Canon R5 long enough to know that I don't think it's a problem with the card itself. I think it's a problem with the interpretation of the specifications within the camera and how the camera reports errors. Uh, other cameras don't do this the same way, so I'm not going to blame the pair gear. I'm not going to blame, blame the Cobalt card. Uh, Cobalt cards are certified by Nikon for their Z9. They're, very, they're one of the fastest cards. So, um, yeah, I, I really don't see that as an issue. But in terms of, you know, using the pair gear cards, you know, I like them. Initially, I had planned to do this video where I was going to say I highly recommend the pair gear one terabyte card as a low cost alternative. But at this point, I can't say I recommend it as a low cost alternative because, well, the Angelbird, for the same price with the pair gear on sale, and it's got a much faster minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second. So, um, yeah, and, and a slightly faster read speed as well. So, um, yeah, really, really surprising. Oh, and one last thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help this channel grow, and I take it as a virtual pat on the back. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.